Hi friends! Today's project is going to be a bit different from what I am normally making. Being locked at home, I started spending more time with my children, so I have decided to create a DIY interactive book for them. I was inspired by the dollhouses and the little figurines that they like to play with. If you are interested, the toy brand is called Calico Critters in the USA and Sylvanian Families in the rest of the world. It's not a sponsored video, by the way. Some of the toy sets contain little storybooks that my children happened to like a lot, so this is where the idea comes from. I am not experienced in character drawing, let's put it this way, but I have a camera and I have a lot of paper crafting supplies, so this is what I'm going to use to make my book. Instead of drawing illustrations, I'm going to create the setting using the toys and the dollhouses, photograph them, and then create a kind of uh, scrapbook or a traveler's notebook layout. As a base for my book, I'm going to use one of the traveler's notebooks by Everyday Journaling. They come in a set of three lined grid and a plain ones. This time I'm going to use a lined one, I think. The size of this traveler's notebook is about eight and a quarter by four inches, and it has 16 pages, which I think will be the right size for me. I'm going to leave the first page for a title, I don't know what it's going to be just yet, and I think I'm going to stick down the, the two pages together to make them a bit thicker. So this is going to be my first spread. Since the story is about a rabbit girl living in a lighthouse, I'm going to use this chipboard lighthouse image. As always, I'm going to include a list of supplies that I'm using, including the toys, down below in the description box, as well as on my blog. I'm using a craft knife to pop out all the negative pieces from the lighthouse image, and then I'm going to back it up with the patterned paper. I'm applying some liquid glue at the back of the lighthouse and then I'm sticking it down onto a scrap piece of paper. I tend to hoard pattern paper scraps, so this is a great way to use them up. I'm using the same craft knife again to cut out this image. You can also use the scissors to cut it out. And, uh, of course, if you like the red stripes on the lighthouse, just use the red pattern paper. I want mine to be mostly white. To create the background, I'm going to use a stencil by Tim Holtz called Splatters. And, by the way, these stencils are a perfect size for this format of notebooks. I'll be applying distress inks through the stencil with a mini blending tool. I'm using the lightest shades of ink here. They are tumbled glass and hickory smoke. I'm going for a very subtle look on the background because I'm still going to add some text on top. Stenciling is a perfect technique for journals and traveler's notebooks because the ink don't tend to show through the pages. To create the C, I'm going to use uh, the washi tape with a wave pattern. It's quite a thin washi tape and it's meant to create a border, but the thing is you can layer it and uh, since it's semi-transparent, you can't really see the, the seams and you can't tell that it's made up of strips. I have applied three strips of washi tape here, and then I'm going to trim off the extra tape that is hanging off both edges of the page. 
Next, I'm going to apply a small amount of liquid glue at the back side of the lighthouse image and I'm going to stick it down onto my page. I have also decided to add some shading to the lighthouse, so I'm applying Faded Jeans Distress Ink with a sponge applicator. I'm trying not to press too hard to get soft edges. I have die cut some tiny flying seagulls out of light grey cardstock and I'm going to add them to my little scene as well. These dies are by Paper Discovery. I am arranging the birds so that they are kind of swirling around the top of the lighthouse and once I'm happy with their placement I'm going to stick them down one by one using the liquid glue. Now I'm going to add my text and I'm going to use a silver gel pen. I'm going for this light color because the scene is very soft and I think that the black text would overpower the entire scene. I think you don't really have to have a calligraphy handwriting to do this. You just take your time and make sure the text is legible. That's all you are going to need. I ended up uh, filling all the sky area with the text. And then I'm going to move on to the next page. At this point I decided I would create a more complicated look, so I'm going to make an insert. And I'm going to use one of the printed vellums by Paper Discovery. I'm trimming it down to 8 and a quarter by 8 and a quarter inches, and then I'm folding it in half, and that is going to be the size of my notebook. Before I add these pages to my book, I'm going to do some hot foiling. I'm going to use this gorgeous hot foil stamp. It's called Seaside Frame and it's by Couture Creations. Hot foiling is a great technique for vellum, not only because of the look, but also because the pages are transparent and you can see through them and you know exactly where your image is going to be positioned. After I have positioned the page and the frame die, I'm adding a sheet of cardstock between the pages so that this image will not be debossed on the other page. And then I'm going to send the platform through my Gemini Junior die cutting machine. In case you're using the same machine, I heated it up to the medium temperature and set up the time to one minute, and I got the perfect foil transfer. I have pierced the four holes at the spine of the page, just where the staples are, and now I'm adding this page to my book. Then I'm adding the rest of the pages that I have taken out previously. Then you just have to bend the staples again and some uh, nice metal tool would be great for it. I'm just using uh, the tweezers from the foiling machine. Now let's go ahead and add more decorations to the vellum insert. Since my first page is the introduction of a main character, I think it makes sense to add her picture inside this frame. So I have photographed her and uh, I have printed out her picture in black and white using my Sprocket Mini Photo Printer. Then I'm going to use a circle die to trim down the photo to a circle. I have used two more circle dies to create a frame out of wood grain paper and the one I used is by Craft Consortium. Then I'm attaching this frame on top of the picture. The photos in this printer are self-adhesive, so I'm just peeling off the liner from the back of the photo and I'm sticking it down inside the foiled frame. 
Now I'm going to add even more decorations to this frame, so I've die-cut two large swirls out of silver mirror cardstock, and the swirl dies are also by Paper Discovery. I'm going to trim them down a little bit so they fit inside the page, and then I'm going to stick them down around the picture using the liquid glue. The printed vellum paper I'm using is adhesive friendly, so you are not going to see the glue through this page at the wrong side. I'm also going to attach a few small half pearls right onto the foiled frame. I'm not adding too many because I don't want to take away from that gorgeous foiled frame. I'm also going to attach one large flare button that has I'm a Seaholic written on it. It also has a wood grain background that I think matches my layout just fine. And finally, I'm adding some shiny clear confetti onto the frame as well as around the frame, and that is going to finish this page. Now let's fill in the next page, the one that is behind the vellum insert. Here I am covering up the wrong side of uh, the picture with um, the wood grain uh, circle, although later on you will see me changing my mind. I have printed out a couple more pictures that are illustrating my story. They are about the rabbit girl fishing with her father and cooking with her mother. By the way, the size of the photos is 2 by 3 inches. I'm using more nautical paper scraps that I've been hoarding for years, and I'm attaching the first one at the top of my page. I'm also going to add a white plain vellum additional layer to back up my photo, so I'm sticking down uh, my picture onto that vellum and I'm simply tearing off uh, all extra vellum around it. I love using vellum on nautical projects because uh, it looks a lot like sea foam. Then I'm using the double-sided tape to stick down the photo with the vellum underlay onto the patterned paper background. For the next photo, which is the kitchen one, I'm also going to use a doily, so I'm trimming off the edge of it and I'm sticking it down onto my page, and then I'm going to add the patterned paper as well as the picture itself. When I had all the photos attached to this page, I thought I would also add another one into the circle on the left. This time I'm not going to make a picture myself, instead I have decided to use a picture from the catalog that is included in nearly every toy set. There was a scene in the catalog that matches my story perfectly, and it's the one where the girl is writing a letter to her friend. So again I'm going to use a circle die to cut it out. I'm backing up this photo with the blue pattern paper. I've die cut a circle out of it that is slightly larger than my photo, and this way I'm going to have a thin border around it. Then I peeled off the wooden circle from the vellum page, and I'm sticking down the, the picture instead. Now when I have all the pictures attached, it's time to add my uh, handwritten text, and this time I'm going to use a blue gel pen. I'm also going to use a very thin one quarter of an inch washi tape as a text divider, and uh, after attaching that, I'm going to add the rest of the text. This time again I'm going to fill in uh, the rest of the page with the text.
By the way, if you want to read the story, I will have uh, high resolution photos on my blog, but please don't expect much from it. It's a very simple story. Here I'm sticking down the first two pages together. This way they are nice and thick and they can hold uh, dimensional heavy elements like chipboards and other embellishments. Also, this way, if I decide to add some stamping, it's not going to show through the page. Now I'm adding uh, the confetti onto the vellum page right behind the ones on the other side. And this way, both sides are going to look nice and neat. And this is what the finished second spread looks like. And this is uh, what the entire book is looking like at the moment. So far I like how it turned out and I hope children are going to like it as well. Maybe they will even have some suggestions as for what's going on next. I'm really happy I didn't have to do any drawing, but I could practice my scrapbooking skills instead. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial too. If you like uh, this type of projects, please let me know in the comments below. Have a wonderful weekend and I hope to see you again really, really soon. Bye bye!